Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching Out Here in the Redwoods. I am your host, Denise Riles. And for everyone here, aloha means hello and goodbye. Welcome, come out, come out, wherever you are. Now, as you can see, we have a very colorful show for you today. And I have a new friend, Amber, and a returning guest, I think we're going to make him a co-host someday, Rick Horton. Good Welcome. evening. How are you Welcome doing everybody. tonight? So, Rick, who do we have here? Who did you bring We have you Tribal today? Oasis, and I will let Meg, the leader of this group, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about the group. And be sure to see them at Ravenswood you know, on the Glen in Weaverville. There will be more information later in the show. But Meg, go ahead and introduce the girls to us. Well, my name is Megs Madrone. And I'm Marjani Valamorte. And, and we're, we're your Tribal, Tribal Oasis. Oasis. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. What is the term for that yell, and what does that mean? That's called a zagarit. A zagarit. Yes, yes, and zagarits are done um, for several reasons. One is joy, excitement. Um, another reason is um, like when your men were coming home from war, you would zagarit to let people know someone was coming or you know, with that joy and excitement. A woman would also zagari when she was angry with her man. And the way that she would approach him with it, usually they would cover their mouth. Uh -huh. Sometimes if they lean in and they do it with their mouth open, it's a sign for him to give her some space. Oh! <laughs> I think I'm very headed for the hills now. Yes! <laughs> I'm not, I'm not we all cover with our hands. You're good, you're good, we like you. So you are working with Rick Horton, and are going to be uh, uh, showing at the Ravenwood upon the Glen Ren Fair. That's right. right. Yes. And uh, how did you guys get started in performing at Ren Fairs and things like that? That's not all that you do. Is this your first time at Ravenwood? Oh no, we've been at Ravenswood uh, since it started last year, and also we've been working with Rick at the Excalibur Fair, which is in Arcata, for the past. It seems like three. Three or four years mm, or so. It's been it's closer been, to five. Been, oh, yeah. heard, uh, oh, yeah. Time flies. Time yeah. flies when you're having fun. Uh, yeah. But uh, we got interested in it because it lends so well to our form of dance, you uh -huh. know, which really goes back to uh, the Silk Road and it goes back to a nomadic lifestyle of these desert clans. Uh huh. Yes. Wow. So there was actually this kind of dancing in the medieval and renaissance time periods. Yes, as Meg said, during the yeah. spice, you know, rose and that, uh, there was an intermixing of that. And, you know, before the 1600s of that, almost everything in Europe came over the spice road. Uh -huh. So the caravans basically made their way west as time moved along. And, uh, the, you know, when they did get to a town or that, it was common to have big festivals. And that's what we're trying to do is Ravenwood, and this is what uh, this group does all the time. They entertain here locally. I'm sure that many of the folks are familiar with them. Uh -huh. And they are one of the best in the uh, country. Is that about uh -huh. right, Gail? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, <laughs> thank all you. of you oh, ladies you, look so beautiful. And all of your costuming, your outfit, is this traditional dress for a particular era, area in the nomadic life and dance? Uh, it's actually been very Americanized over the years. Okay. So it, it lends from the different cultures along the Silk Road. Okay. So um, like my, my pantaloons are made out of a fine like Chinese silk. Okay. But then, you know, like one of our coats might be more Turkish in style, another might have a more Moroccan lend. The oh. jewelry comes from tribes in Afghanistan, uh -huh. the swords from Pakistan. So we tend to take from the different regions and muddle it all together to do a traditional rendition of the region in general, okay. not any specific tribes. Well, it's certainly breathtaking. I love it. Thank you. And I'm going to say this. Uh, can I take a shout out to Talisman Beads? She <laughs> made this, ladies and gentlemen. Talisman Beads. You can get yep. stuff there. Shout out by local or by local, right? <laughs> you also made the headpieces for everybody? Yes, mm -hmm. Anya made them. Yes. yes. Wow. So, how long does it take everybody to get dressed and prepare to go on the road? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's quite a me. question. You love me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I think it depends on how long you've been doing it. Okay. Uh, I've been at it for well over a decade. Okay. So it takes me, what, five, ten minutes to get my makeup on and maybe ten, fifteen minutes to layer on, depending on how heavy I want the jewelry and the, and the headpiece. Uh -huh. um, for some people, sometimes it takes up to an hour. Uh, for some, it's more of a ritual. 
you know, you're changing into this empowered goddess, powerful oh, tribal sweet. dancer. Sweet. So as you're putting your face dots on, you're getting your eyelashes on, you're adorning your head, you know, it's kind of transforming you in a way. So yeah. some people, you know, I know when I can, I like to take more time getting ready for that reason, that it, it puts me more into that mindset right. to give a strong performance and, um, you know, stay true to kind of the art form as well as have fun with it. Yeah, and it's both beautiful and powerful. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Tribal dance is really rooted. We're connected to the earth, and all the dancing that we do is improvised. It's oh improvised in the moment. So our arms and our heads and our wrists signal to each other what it is that we are going to do. And this, this form of dance was adopted by, um, by some of these nomadic tribes. Uh -huh. As Marjani mentioned, what we do is sort of a mix of many different cultures, but the idea is still the same, that if you are part of this nomadic tribe. There's clans all over the nation. And maybe once a year, twice a year, you come together in a big gathering at a festival, you know, right. at a market right. fair. And this is the time now for everyone in the tribe, especially the young ladies and young men, to check each other out. So what do you want to do? You want to have music, you want to have dance, but you haven't seen these people in so long. You can't pull out some choreographed dance. So right. it's passed down through the generations, these movements that you do and the arms that tell the story. Right. And everyone from the tribe gets up and dances together in unison, even if you've never met before. Nice. Yeah. And it's men and women. It's a cultural dance that men and women do, only as Americans we tend to see it more as a feminine right. dance. But yeah, it's something that both the men and the ladies get together and they know the language. And by children. Every, yeah. yeah, and I was going to ask, Amber, how long have you been doing this? Two months. Uh, Two months. Tops. And how old are you? Nine. How do you feel when you, when you dance in this style as a little girl at nine? Hmm. I really like dancing. It's really fun. Uh-huh. And I wish I started out when I was younger so... I was more advanced in the levels. Uh huh. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, <laughs> do you like, um, as your sisters do, getting the face dots and preparing yeah. for the dance? Yeah. Now, do the other kids at school know that you do this? Not all of them. No? Only like a couple. Yeah. And do they like it? I think that's beautiful. <coughs> Pardon me. What questions do you get asked by your friends? Actually, I don't really get asked anything. Mm -hmm. And what is your part in the petals that you're holding? I would be throwing them. <laughs> okay, what does that mean when you throw the petals? So, I'm going to be doing big old circles with my arms throwing them. Okay. And do you know why you're going to throw petals on the floor? No. Remember? Oh, um, I will be throwing them as offerings. As offerings. See, not a lot of people understand this, so thank you for helping us learn. Yeah, so what, what are some of the dances you do? What do some of the moves mean? Well, um, some because like in Aloha, you know, like in the in hula, mm -hmm. some mean trees, some mean come here, you know. Right, and lots of Indian dance and bhangra like have mudras where the fingers and hands mean certain things. Uh -huh. uh, this is more of a, a joyful dance, a celebratory dance, okay. because people haven't seen each other. Let's say four or five months, they're going to a spring festival. You know, celebrate winter's over. It's time yeah. to go replenish and say hello, see everyone. Uh -huh. they're, they're bringing news of like, oh, so-and-so had a baby and these people got married. Oh, and this man became rich and that one married a king. And so everyone's having this excitement. They're introducing people, you know, oh, babies are born. So it's big celebration. So it's not a lot of um, telling stories so much with the movement. Okay. Like it would be with like a sword dance or, you know, emulating working in the fields by doing a basket dance. Okay. It's more um, a means of just getting together having a good time, moving the body. Right. Um, some movements, I mean, there's some things you just don't do. Right. Like, um, you know, thrust your pelvis toward the audience or um, <laughs> touch yourself with your, with your inside of your hands. Right. There's certain cultural things that you just don't do that are inappropriate, but you wouldn't do those having a big, like, barn dance anyway with everyone, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's kind of like the equivalent of a barn dance. You know, everyone's kind of... Just singing and dancing and moving <laughs> along the same way. It's a joyous festival. I mean, we're yes. it's starting to you know just have fun. Right. There's no set rules per se. You just yeah. 
express yourself however you're feeling at the moment. Yeah. And this is what we try to do, bring the entertainment out. And we're lucky enough tonight, a little bit later in the show, these gals are going to do a little demonstration for us. Yes! So, ladies and gentlemen, catch them at Ravenwood upon the Glen in Weaverville. Ladies, ready? <laughs> Oh, you can't have that. I'm going to have this one, sorry. No. Give it another 19 years. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thinking of me, dear, 
Over the sea beside her, over the moss and the fire I want to see my lass, who lives in Exxonshire Away with the binding shilling, and away with the cap and the feather I want to see my lass, who lives in Exxonshire Over the sea beside her, over the moss and the fire I want to see my lass, who lives in Exxonshire Over the sea beside her, over the moss and the fire I want to see my lass, who lives in Exxonshire
Thank you everyone for watching out here in the Redwoods. Now we will show a dance sample of Tribal Oasis. Also, stay tuned for more details on the Ravenswood.
Thank you, everybody. You've been watching Out Here in the Redwoods with my guests, Tribal Oasis and Rick Horton. See you next time.